Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up to the north of Stockholm again, so we're continuing on with this mini-series of Swedish reviews that I'm doing for you of late, but we're going to go to Hedemora and visit a brewery who I rate really quite highly actually. We're going to go to Opie Gourds once again, and this is one of their recent limited edition beers that they did, the Lavish IPA, and this one's really interesting because it was rated at 97 on ratebeer.com, and that site very rarely leads you wrong, but it also has two experimental hops in it, HBC 344 and also the Lemon Drop Hop, and I've never had those in any of the beers that I've reviewed for you, so very, very excited to try this one, simply for that reason it's got experimental hops in it, and it is rated so highly. But anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward, all the usual website links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other Opie Gorge reviews that I've done for you before, the Facebook page for the channel, please like it, and also my untapped profile as well, and feel free to add me as a friend on there. And I will apologise in advance to my Swedish viewers if any of the pronunciations aren't quite right, and uh, please do let me know some other Swedish beers you'd like me to have a look at. I will try and get them through at SysDM blog it, so always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the video, so don't hesitate to get in touch. But anyway, Opigar's Brewery was founded in the early 2000s in Hedemora, and as I told you, this is to the northwest of Stockholm. You're talking near Borlänge and Fallon. Of course, Fallon being the home of a really awesome Swedish band called Sabaton. Some of you might have heard of them. But the brewery sits on the 250-year-old Falkström family farm, and it's actually in a small wooden building which was constructed in 1896. But this space was originally used for flax dressing and also for their great-grandfather's metal smithing as well. But all of the beers are brewed in this old building, but they also added a new malt house to the farm as well. But the brewery was founded in the early 2000s by Bjorn to revive the family farm and also to revive the old traditional um, Swedish farmhouse ales if you like. But these beers were in the norm in Sweden until a wave of uh, modern kind of generic lager breweries took over in the 1800s and this made the farmhouse beers largely unprofitable for small kind of businesses like the Felstrom family farm. But the brewery's become very popular in recent years in Sweden and it's also allowed the Felstrom family to continue to make their living on the farm as they have done since the 1700s and in their first year they were producing only 8,000 litres of beer and they sold it locally but they've now produced well over 1 million litres of beer and as I told you this is a brewery who I personally rate very very highly. Opie Guards are actually starting to export a lot now. I've seen a couple of the other guys from the UK who are reviewing these beers and they are pretty damn good. Whether any of them will have tried this one I can't tell you because like I say it is a limited edition beer but they do have a good range of beers as well and you can find those on the brewery website but just to list them for you I have them here in my notes there's the Amarillo, the American Dark Ale, Dark Lager, Easter Ale, Everyday IPA, Golden Ale, Indian Tribute which is one I reviewed for you before that was really quite nice there's this guy here the Lavish IPA which is a limited edition one, Session Pale Ale, Single Hop Ale, the Summer Session Beer, Turbo Double IPA, Turbo Stout and also the Winter Ale and recently they also produced the Bridge IPA which was a collaboration beer with Omega from Denmark and I actually do have the, the Omega version of that to review for you at some point too. It's called Building Bridges. Maybe that review will appear before this one, it might appear after but you can rest assured it will appear. So I would like to try the Opigards version of it as well and see if that's any different once I get around to those videos. But anyway, let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer now. So this one is a 6.8% IPA. It's hopped with Mosaic, Chinook and Citra, very well known hops for IPAs but it also uses the lemon drop and the as of yet unnamed hop HBC 344. The malt base is Pilsner, Munich Caramel and Wheat Malts and this one is a limited edition of 20,000 bottles apparently so I'm not sure if anyone else will be able to review this beer for you but I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork before we open it up. It's the kind of typical Opie Gourds um, artwork actually. All of their beers are like this but just different colours and different symbols in the middle of the, the ring there. But this one's really quite nicely presented and I actually had to, I had to go to one of the Sistium Belogets in the southern part of Malmö to get this one because it's sold out in Lund really quite quickly. So I went through quite a bit to get this beer because I really wanted to try it but I'm sure it will be worth the wait. As I said, rated at 97 on ratebeer.com. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting here. Very much excited to try this one for you today. Oh, and there is the Opigord's bottle cap on this one. They use that on all their beers. 
And I should mention it says Dalarna on the bottle cap as well, which is the county, I believe, that Hedemora is in. And I'll also tell you a little bit about the two experimental hops that are in this one. They're both from Yakima Valley in America. Uh, and yeah, apparently they are expected to go very highly. I'll just bring my notes up again and tell you exactly what I found out about these hops when I did the research on them. But yeah, uh, the Lemon Drop, as I said, is from Yakima Valley. It was first bred in 2014 and it's available commercially since 2015. And apparently it gives you a big citrusy aroma and a sort of herbal floral character. And it's recommended for use in saisons and wheat beers to give you a nice lemon base of the beer, actually. And there's also HBC 344. This one was first bred in 2013. Apparently a daughter of the Warrior Hop and it gives you a sort of green apple and tropical aroma as well. And it's also, like I say, from Yakima Valley in Washington State over in the northwest of America. So, looks this beer, that's your experimental hops, but this beer looks very, very nice. As I said, 6.8% IPA, some really interesting stuff. I'll just check how you're seeing the, uh, the color of this beer, actually, but you can see it's poured a really nice, rich, orangey amber color. Really can't wait to get stuck into this one. There's a half finger, probably a bit more than that when I poured it, actually, of a frothy, kind of, I would say it's, Okay, creamy coloured head rather than white, but very frothy and very attractive looking. You can smell the fruits off this beer without even paying too much attention. There's a lot of nice, sweet, juicy, tropical fruit coming off of this one. No, no real carbonation visible on this one, actually. It's, if I put my fingers behind it, you can see it is completely hazy. There's a few little bubbles going up towards the bottom of the head, but nothing big sticking towards the side of the glass. Beer looks really, really quite nice. So let's have a smell of this one. As I was saying, there's a huge, juicy, fruity character from this one. It's huge and hoppy, as you would expect when it's got all these nice hops in it. There's a big grapefruit character from it, and that's the Chinook and the Citra that will give you that. Mainly the Chinook, I think, actually. Citra gives you more of a, a kind of diverse tropical fruit nose. But you can pick up a little bit of peach sharpness coming out of this one. Maybe. I think there's some apricot and kind of mangoey notes coming out too. The slightly more juicy tropical fruits, the peaches and sort of passion fruit, come out a little bit sharper. The grapefruit, when you sugar it up a bit, you definitely get a little bit of that sour note that you get from grapefruit. But all of the, the things like the peaches and the passion fruit, the slightly sharper tropical notes, and the apricots and the mangoes, maybe even a little bit of papaya in here actually. They all come from the citra hop. The citra hop gives you a really, really nice tropical nose on your beers. You can pick up a little bit of citrusy character too, and that's the mosaic hop that will give you that. Mosaic always gives you this kind of sharp, slightly florally citrus note, and the lemon drop actually is given there too. It's quite a, a distinct citrus actually. It's coming across as quite, coming across as really quite smooth actually. But at the same time, you can detect a little bit of the floral citrusy note coming out of it too. So just pay a bit of attention to the nose on this beer. As I say, the experimental hops are always interesting. There's so many new hops coming out that when you come across them, it's always good just to think about it a little bit when it's your first encounter. But as I say, there's a big, there's a good floral aromatic note coming out of this one too. And that's, yeah, the mosaic and the lemon drop, definitely. But there's some piney resins as well, and that's the Chinook coming out of this. But underneath, you can pick up the malt base of this beer, and that's the kind of slightly bready, that's the bready character. There's a little bit of wheat, maybe, and definitely a bit of caramel sweetness. But overall, the main component of this beer, I think, it comes across as being a very juicy and tropical fruity IPA, this. And you can detect that when you open the bottle. You don't have to think too much about it. But yeah, the beer smells really nice. As I say, just have a look at it before you actually drink it. But yeah, without further ado then, let's get stuck into this beer. This is the Lavish IPA, a limited edition beer of only 20,000 from Opigord's Breguery in Dalarna County, Hedemora. So if you do manage to come across it, do give it a try. It's supposed to be an excellent one and we're just going to find out. Skoll. Yeah. Now, I said recently in a review that was of Almagar Batch 1000, that was the best IPA I'd ever tried. And this is only on one sip right enough. I could tell it after one sip with the Omegar Batch 1000. This one is in that category as well. This is, even on one sip you can tell, this is a really, 
really quite brilliant IPA this. I have to say, well done to Oppie Gords. I can see why people rate this brewery so highly. I mean, the beers you'll get from these guys are truly excellent. It's, give this guy a go. If you do happen to find it, give it a go. Seriously. But before you think too much about the flavour, sugar it around your mouth a little bit and just let your whole palate adjust. But this beer is beautiful actually. There's a good blend there's a good just a blend of stuff in there. The floral the first impression of it is that the floral and aromatic character in this one's really punching its way forward. But then the other flavours start to come out a little bit later on in the beer. Yeah. Oh, the fruit the fruit character at the front of the tongue is really nice. As I always say with IPAs, around just if you go to the front curve of your tongue and then go back a little bit, you get this nice oily bubble from this, and this is where a lot of the fruity characters coming out. The grapefruit is a lot more prominent in the flavour than it is in the aroma, I would say. And it's really nice actually. I always like a good bit of sour grapefruity flavour. But the other fruits are in there as well. The more juicy ones that you pick up in the aroma, like the, the apricots and the papayas and the mangoes a little bit, they're being pushed to the back. They're kind of slightly more subtle flavours. I would say it's the passion fruit, the peaches and the, the grapefruit that are really pushing their way forward in the fruity characters of this beer. That said, there is a good, the citrus really kind of comes up and competes with the tropical fruits in this beer and it does come across as a quite slightly florally aromatic spicy flavour in this one actually. It's, it's really quite interesting this, the, the floral, the, the sort of citrusy element is really kind of almost fighting the tropical flavours in this one. It's, it's really nicely done and it's quite a complex beer and quite interesting so do think about that when you're trying this. Yeah, it comes in when you first let your palate adjust to it, the beer comes in as being quite punchy with the floral and aromatic dry characters, but then your palate just matures to it a little bit and it becomes just that little bit more juicy and then you're starting to detect more of the fruity flavours and I think that's when the sort of mangoes and kind of the, the, peak, the, the sort of mangoes, papaya and, uh, and things like that, the more juicy characteristics do come out a little bit more as you move into the aftertaste. But the most prominent fruits, like I say, is the peaches, the grapefruit is the main one. And there's also a bit of the sharper passion fruit in there, but the citrusy character to this beer is really punching its way through. And it's quite, that the lemon drop hop is giving it quite a sort of florally, it's almost spicy character actually. So really quite interesting in that regard. In the middle of the palate too, I think you can pick up, usually, that, usually that's where you expect the malty flavours of the beer, but there is almost just a little bit of a, a slightly, just a very light apple flavour in there. You can pick that up, especially when you go into the aftertaste, but the middle of your tongue is just blanketed by a light kind of bready malt base, and it just goes right across the middle of your tongue there. It does have a bit of body to it, and that will be the wheat malts that are coming out, but the Munich and Pilsner malts, even in their own right, they give you quite a big sort of... Uh, bready character to the beer. The caramel, you can get a little bit of caramel sweetness just going right down the middle of the tongue there, but it's, it's very subtle and that's just because the, the fruity characters, and the, the tropical fruits and the citrus are quite prominent in this beer. So you've got a big florally aromatic dry character at the front of the tongue and the caramel sweetness is more towards the back, but it's quite subtle just because of how prominent the fruity characters are in this beer. But yeah, this is a really, really nice beer, so definitely give it a go if you get the chance. Around the edges of the palate, as I said, at the front of the tongue you've got quite a bit of a florally aromatic character uh, coming out of this one. And um, But as you move further back actually, I think it becomes more smooth and more grassy, which is really, really quite nice actually. I think it's fair to say with this beer as well, there is a bit of pine resin just kind of underpinning it and that's the Chinook hop that gives you that. If I was ever brewing, I found this with a couple of beers, there are a few uh, hops that give you a sort of pine resin but for me the Chinook one is the one that really hits the spot and gives you just a nice, slightly, almost subtle underpinning pine flavour and it, it comes across really well in this beer as well. You detect it around the front of the tongue. When you pay a bit more close attention to that, the floral aromatic characters are a little bit uh, sort of spicy and piney 
and it just underpins that aspect of the flavour really well. So, you know, in terms of the flavour of this beer, it's really nicely done. With the mouthfeel of it, I would say definitely mid body. The carbonation is quite smooth on this one. But the carbonation, in a, to a degree, does help the drier aspects, as I say, the floral aromatic flavours and the piney resins too, it helps bring those out. But it's got a big oily mouthfeel to it. This is one of the more oily IPAs I've come across in all of my time doing the doing these beer reviews, but it's got a huge hoppy, bitter and dry character. It, it comes out a little bit more into the aftertaste and it's these, as I say, the lingering flavour is a bit of the grapefruit, a bit of that kind of distinctive um, citrusy flavour as well, sort of herbally, slightly spicy floral character and then they've got the piney resins and the floral aromatic character around the front. The bready characters of the beer are, they're, they're there as well but just a little bit more subtle. The, the floral aromatic character is the thing that's punching its way out. So that's the main mouthfeel of this beer. There's a little bit of juiciness from the fruit but it kind of gives way really as I say to those more dry and bitter hop characters and there is a little bit of malty sweetness but really it's a very hop forward IPA and they say in the commercial description the whole point of lavish IPA is to be overwhelming and in terms of the hop characteristic it really is that and if you enjoy a hop forward IPA you will not be disappointed with this guy. So overall there's no other word for this guy than pretty damn awesome, I have to say. And it fully deserves its rating of 97 on Rate Beer. So I'm not sure if you will find this beer, but if you do come across it, buy it up because it really is. It's one of the best IPAs I've reviewed on the channel here. And I've been, if I had to pick two breweries, in, uh, that, I've, that I've discovered really since I've come across to Sweden. It would be Omegar from Denmark. They're producing some really, really awesome stuff at the moment and it would be Opigords as well. These guys are really, really good. And another good one is Brewski from Helsingborg as well. They're a very, very good brewery. Those would be my top three breweries and this is another excellent addition from Opigords. Really, really cool brewery. So if you do get the chance to try any of their beers, I would highly recommend it. But I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. It's been really cool to return to Opigords once again. I will be reviewing more of their beers in the fairly near future. So as always, let me know in the comments section below your own thoughts on this beer if you do happen to have tried it. Always interesting to hear from you guys. Please like the Facebook page. Add me as a friend on Untapped. I'll be back soon with more beer reviews. But in the meantime, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I hope you're enjoying this series of Swedish reviews that I'm doing for you. And I will catch you soon with more. Slanja just now.